One of the first signs of a tanking economy is a slowing housing market. Wages are stagnant, and it's tough for many to even think of buying a home. They can't qualify for a loan. 40% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. How many you think can afford to buy a home? Homeownership is less affordable now that even during the housing credit crisis. The economy sucks for 90% of Americans. Only the top 10% have been making gains for about 30 years. There is a growing housing affordability crisis that is making it increasingly difficult for millions of middle-class households to buy a home or afford their rent. The job market hasn't changed much in the past five years. Wages still too low. The stock market is detached from reality. This is a bubble. No doubt housing market is in one gigantic bubble. People bought high and now are trying to sell. They are losing money. Bringing checks to closing. Auto loans are in trouble. Defaults are way up. We are sitting on a bubble that will explode shortly. And seeing the Fed injecting billions into the repo market, it is clear something is happening. This something is global, and I expect home prices to drop significantly over the next few years. We are witnessing the Wall Streetization of everything. Silicon Valley is now run by Wall Street, not consumer demand. Because Wall Street provides the cash. Wall Street now also owns the housing market. Welcome your new overlord, peasants. The central bank and its counterfeit money are destroying America and the world. The fake money cartel loves it, it's like pennies from heaven, and homeowners who are mortgaged out are about to get shafted real hard. The wealthy investors can't swoop in because they'll find the poverty index isn't going to improve from here, which means you can't buy a good deal in a deteriorating serfdom society where you can't find a neighborhood that isn't overrun with immigrants, crime, drug dealers, and gangs. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. Virtually everyone believes the false narrative that the American dream is owning a home. What most Americans own is a burdensome mortgage, which in turn makes them a slave to the lender. Even when our homes are debt-free, the government owns the first lien via property taxes. Quit paying your property taxes, and you're going to find out real quick who it is that really owns your home. In spite of what the banking and real estate industry says, the true American dream is based entirely upon freedom and liberty and is not dependent upon the ownership of a material good. Homeownership is overrated. You don't really own your home anyway. Stop paying taxes, and you'll see who owns it. Get the right RV with a shower. Inboxes and mail them to the IRS. In the US, housing prices are grossly inflated and falling fast. Housing prices are cratering during a time when home mortgage interest rates remain at historic lows. What happens to prices once interest rates are, for a variety of market-driven reasons, forced higher? If upcoming generations expect to live on the $15 per hour, would you really expect them to buy the overpriced house? How many boomers are leaving the nest for a smaller nest or checking out? Expecting to cash out, but where's the buyers for this overpriced home? There are no move-up buyers for the boomer McMansions. The only buyers in that price range are basically boomers selling to other boomers, swapping like-for-like like assets. There is a feeding frenzy for entry-level homes, but since there are no new entry-level houses, entry-level buyers are buying houses that need a lot of repairs because they don't know any better. These entry-level buyers are just one HVAC or roof replacement away from foreclosure. A generation of parasites living off borrowed money and credit come looking for a bailout with a tear in their eyes. Bring back debtors prison and hit every default with the IRS income tax for unjust enrichment. Lenders aren't your mommy and daddy. And if you borrowed from the mob, they will collect as beneficiaries on your insurance policy. Right before the last bust, the banks said if you are breathing, we will loan you as much as you want. Too many people go too far in debt. The government makes money on every house that is built or sold. Huge property taxes add to the burden. Sales taxes on all items in a house. Environmental laws about cutting timber and many costs put on wages. From painting to landscaping then huge gas taxes and fees on trucking and the building departments are anti-contractors. And then the government says we can't understand why houses cost so much. California will be the first state to go down. Developers, realtors, and landlords will never ever listen until it all comes tumbling down around their ears. Harry Dent says we have one last blow-off coming before the sale of the century. But it's going to be interesting getting there. 
Remember, there are a lot of robo traders out there programmed to buy the dip, and we have the plunge protection team and the Fed. The market has to blow out all those stops and still keep going down in order for the sale of the century to get here. The warning signs are everywhere. Foreclosures are ticking up, bankruptcies slowly increasing, subprime auto about to go critical, add in credit card debt, government overspending causing property taxes to rise, and banksters going nuts then you have the formula for beautiful, sweet 30% correction at a minimum in prices in the hot markets, in some cases 50%. All real estate markets have their own cycles and are clearly visible from which segment of the market is rising or falling. For instance, the last to rise is the condo market. When those prices go up, the cycle is over and is set to fall. Once you understand the primary cycles, you will understand the perfect time to purchase a home, a townhouse, or a condo. That you might be able to make some money from the place you live in is a cute and great day, but if all you own is a home, that is your place to live, and the best thing to do is to pay off the mortgage as fast as possible. And if you are really serious about real estate as an investment, get a broker's license so you can participate in the money made from buying and selling. It cost me $3,000 to get a broker's license in California, and it costs about $500 every four years to renew it, but the last home I bought, I got $26,000 from my cut of the commissions on the house. All you have to ask the seller is do you cooperate with out-of-state brokers, and if they say yes, you get half the commission on the sale. I use that same license to help relatives and friends buy homes and gift them my commissions at a lower price, which pays for all the closing costs and then some. So if you are serious about real estate, get the licenses you need to sit at the table and simply learn your local cycles for houses, townhomes, and condos, which will tell you when to buy and when to sell. The freedom that comes from owning a place to live with no mortgage is fantastic. Also, I need to remind people that property tax never really ends. I paid off the mortgage in my current home five years after I purchased it. And guess what? In 15 years since purchase, the property tax has cost me more than the purchase price. It is a myth that one ever owns real estate. Instead, you just borrow it from the local taxing authority as long as you are willing to pay the taxes. Having no mortgage tells you nothing about the cost of owning real estate. My story is one of the hundreds I am very familiar with. Don't purchase any real estate until you have carefully evaluated the cost of taxes. In many communities, it is the taxes that will absolutely kill you. There is very little private property in this nation. The government owns it, and we just pay rent on it. This, in itself, should be unconstitutional. A home is a place you live in, not a trading vehicle. Every Ponzi scheme has a climax. The Fed has run one for 100 years. Q1, 2, 3, 4, were efforts to procrastinate the inevitable. The ultimate trigger, recognition, is yet to come. Folks, it's straightforward, housing has run its course crashing. The bubble has already burst. Look around at retail spaces, everything is either closing or is empty of commerce and trying not to close. Plenty of vacant commercial real estate. The one you wouldn't expect is doctor's offices, nobody in the waiting rooms. Prices are unaffordable. Many landlords keep on raising prices on small businesses and restaurants, even if their properties are half empty. Most move, and the landlord raises the rent on the few remaining until the whole building is vacant. If this was a business based on cash flow, it wouldn't be happening. It's a game of musical chairs, and the music is about to stop. The real world has been trying to tell us real estate is not a permanent store of wealth. The fictitious financial wealth in real estate disappears. The 1990s, UK, US, SNL, Canada, Toronto, Scandinavia, Japan. The 2000s, Iceland, Dubai, US, 2008. The 2010s, Ireland, Spain, Greece. Get ready to put Australia, Canada, Norway, Sweden, and Hong Kong on the list. The US is going for the hat trick. The 1990s, SNL. The 2000s, 2008. 2010s, another real estate bust is due. Come on. You know how it works. They reinflated the housing bubble with a historic 10 years run of low interest rates. Now that home prices have again reached into the clouds, and the bust is primed to pop back. This time, the Fed will not be able to prop it back up like they did last time by purchasing $60 to $80 billion per month in mortgage-backed securities. 
Without the Fed's intervention in 2007, virtually the entire real estate market would have collapsed. Which would have, in turn, destroyed the US economy. Sooner or later, this fake economy that is built on debt and derivatives is going to have its day of reckoning. When it does, it is going to make the Great Depression look like a party. 2007 was the most significant land grab, wealth transfer in the history of the US. But there will be bigger ones. The pension, 401k grab is going to be amazing. There are other scams as well, notably healthcare and even reverse mortgages. Falling for things like timeshare scams is so the last generation. This was the Atlantis report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.